Hello, welcome back. Today I am actually working from home, so I'm not in a shirt and tie, and I'm actually in a different room than I usually am. But I'm still excited to talk to you about the next amount, the next piece of information that you need to know about peripheral neuropathy. Now, as you remember, we talked about motor neuropathy yesterday and sensory neuropathy but the day before that. So, quick review. You've got the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord, then you have the peripheral nervous system, which is really what we're talking about, which is all the nerves that are coming from the spine and from the brain to the periphery, to all the other areas of the body. And in the peripheral nervous system, you have the somatic nervous system, which is sensory and motor, and you have the autonomic nervous system. Today, we're going to talk about the autonomic nervous system. When it comes to peripheral neuropathy, a lot of times people fail to talk about autonomic nervous system. They just don't think about it because they're usually focused on, truthfully, mostly just the sensory nerves when it comes to peripheral neuropathy. The autonomic nervous system, however, is a very important part that you need to understand if you have peripheral neuropathy because you want to treat this type of peripheral neuropathy if it is a problem. Why would that be the case? Well, those that have an autonomic neuropathy will have a malfunction of the nerves that control heart rate blood pressure, the expansion and contracture of blood vessels, so it affects blood flow directly, respiration, digestion, bladder function, sexual function, and even the simple release of sweat and oils to the skin. All of these things, if they are malfunctioning, can have a much greater effect on the body than even just the pain that comes with, say, with the sensory neuropathy. So it is very, very, very important that you understand what's going on. So if you have a peripheral neuropathy, you should find out if you have an autonomic type peripheral neuropathy. What are some of the symptoms? Well, dizziness, lightheadedness, or fainting can be symptoms because of a orthostatic hypertension where the blood vessels are not expanding and contracting like they're supposed to when you stand up. You could have exercise intolerance, you could have sweating abnormalities, dryness of the skin, poor blood sugar regulation. So if you're diabetic and you actually have an autonomic neuropathy as well, you're going to have an even harder time keeping your blood sugars controlled. Difficulty digesting food, urinary problems, vision abnormalities, even a sexual dysfunction. If you have an autonomic neuropathy, you will start to notice some of these symptoms that can be really as problematic or sometimes more problematic when it comes to having a normal or as I would say an extraordinary life just having because you have an autonomic neuropathy. So say you don't have a sensory neuropathy, you don't have the symptoms, you don't have the pain, but you're having some of these other abnormalities, it is just as important that you know that you have this type of autonomic or this type of peripheral neuropathy, autonomic neuropathy as anything else. So what are the ways that you can find out if you have an autonomic neuropathy? Symptoms, of course, is one of the easy ways. If you have the symptoms, then your chances are that you do have an autonomic type peripheral neuropathy. There are other things that can give you some of those symptoms, but to have all of those symptoms together usually means there's some form of abnormality in the autonomic nervous system. There are tests that can be run for this. Pseudomotor testing, for example. Pseudomotor is the muscles that will react to an electrical current and they will release either a chlorine ion to simulate what would happen if you were to start to sweat. So basically what you're doing is you run electrical current through the feet or the hands and it shows you whether you would have a normal sweat reaction as the body should by basically counting chlorine ions. This is an easy way to test it. This is very effective and is something that could actually tell you, yes, you could have a autonomic neuropathy and it usually can give you a percentage. How much, how high is the percentage of you having an autonomic neuropathy? The more common test or the one that's commonly done is the QSART test, Q-S-A-R-T, which is quantitative pseudomotor axon reflex test. Now, what is this test testing? It's actually saying, determining if the sweat glands are actually really re reacting to a stimulus. And it's checking the sweat release or 
autonomic release of the sweat to that system. So again, if you have an autonomic nervous, nervous system that's malfunctioning, you could have something as simple as a vision abnormality. You could have a problem with sexual dysfunction, urinary problems, difficulty digestion, poor blood sugar control, or dryness of the skin. All of these things that can be managed through careful management of your peripheral neuropathy. So it's important that you know whether you have this problem so you can say, okay, what do I need to do to help my autonomic nervous system? Do I need to be taking certain vitamins? Do I need to be going through certain other types of treatments that will help the autonomic nerves heal and recover and start to function more like they're supposed to? So if you have peripheral neuropathy, it is important that you have your doctor check for an autonomic neuropathy because this could have more long-term effects on your life and truthfully can be more dangerous than say just a peripheral neuropathy that's causing you pain. This is Dr. Brant Gibson and this is your neuropathy nugget day number seven. We just talked about autonomic neuropathy.